Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us for another webinar as the part of the CEM Africa webinar series, leading up to our main event, which is to be hosted virtually on the 12th of October. This would be the eighth edition of CEM Africa. Today's session is sponsored and hosted by Freshworks. Freshworks is a sponsor for the day for the webinar. And before I hand over to Freshworks, I would like to introduce you to our today's uh, panelists. And today's panelists, we have Gladiola, who is the Senior Manager for Customer Experience from African Bank. Gladiola's role has a strong focus on ensuring appropriate measurement of customer experience and creating efficiencies in query resolution, ensuring that built systems and organizational investments support a customer-centric strategy. Her background for the past 14 years or so has been mainly in customer experience consulting and market research. Historic clients range from clients in aviation, telecommunications, and most in the banking industry. Welcome to the panel, Gladiola. Next, we have uh, Sean Edmeston. Sean Edmeston, who is the Director of Customer Experience from APSA Group from Mauritius. So Sean has an excellent track record of engaging and reinvigorating businesses in view of enhancing efficiency and driving profitability through customer experience. Sean currently is the Director of Customer Experience for APSA Bank Mauritius and will be adding the role of Acting Head of Business Banking to his current responsibilities. Welcome to the panel, Sean. Very good to have you. Next, we have Chantel Botha. Chantel is our managing director. She is the brand love for customer experience, brand and business innovator who obsesses over how customers connect with brands. Chantel finds meaning in designing, engaging customer experiences that creates value for brands and their customers. And the moderator for the panel is Balaji Purushottaman. He's the regional manager sales from Freshworks for the South Africa region. Currently working with Freshworks, he's a Google backed up unicorn and multi uh, product SaaS company, specialized in customer engagement and experience space with the C suite uh, customer experience products and clientele across the globe. And he has uh, experience in integrated cloud and uh, marketing experience across various industries that range from automation, technology, cloud sales and enterprise mobility solutions. So here we have all our panelists. Welcome to the panel guys, how is everyone doing? So before we go to our main panel, before Balaji takes over, I want to quickly check with Chantel, Gladiola, Sean and Balaji, how has this time been for you? How has it been for you during the entire pandemic time? How have you been holding up what is new that you have learned? What is new that you're doing? It's a quick ice breaking so that, you know, we can make this panel more interesting. So just starting with Chantel. Chantel, hi, how are you? I'm good, Pooja. Are you asking about the last year? How has yeah. it been? Yes, you look lovely, Chantel. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I dressed up for the occasion. I thought I'd spice it up a little bit. Yes. No, Pooja, the last year, man, it sucked. There's so many things that were challenging and, you know, hard. And I haven't seen my, I haven't hugged my team since February. Yes. You know, so, so this virus kind of really, really fucked up our mojo a little bit. But that being said, that being said, there's a ton of stuff that I'm grateful for. You know, our clients that we work with have continued to pay us. They've continued to use our services. We've grown as a team. So just, you know, sweet and sour on the one side, like really challenging and on the other side, just incredibly grateful. We've got an academy with over 800 people on that academy oh, wow. that we would have seen face to face that we now doing virtual training for. So just just incredibly grateful for health and, you know, the, the members of my team that that have gotten sick that they've just recovered so well. I know, I know, I can understand, but it's good to know that there are a lot of positivity as well. So, and thanks, thanks, Chantel. Thanks, Chantel. And then goes to Gladiola. Gladiola, how was your year? What have you been doing new? How's everything at your uh, year? Th thanks, Pooja. Uh, it's time I spent most of the can you hear me clearly? Yes, yes, we can. We yeah, can. yes, glad. Oh. oh, okay. Now I spent most of, of uh, the pandemic 
pregnant. <laughs> oh. So that was most of my year. I had to adapt to working from home. Okay. Um, I was pregnant with my, my, my second daughter, who is now seven months. But um, similar sentiments to Chantal, very grateful, grateful for my family, my job, and, and all that we have. I think um, an interesting fact, but not necessarily about um, the year per se, but about where I am currently right now, is since um, end of May, I've, I told myself I'm going to do this 21 day eat healthy and be fit thing that you do. And I must say it's the 9th of June today and I'm on day one again. Every day <laughs> I fail and every day is another day one. But yeah, know, looking we have, uh, we have uh, a lot of, we, we have actually learned a lot. Everyone has added on to the skills. Everyone has been doing new things. Everyone has been trying things that they have never done before. So during this time, we actually got a lot of time for ourselves as well. That's nice. And congratulations, Gladiola, for your second baby. Thank you. And Sean, coming to you, how has it been with you? How has the pandemic been with you? How has the yeah, pandemic look, I, with you? One, uh, one bit of advice I can give is uh, don't move countries in the middle of a pandemic. <laughs> uh, it, uh, it, it becomes a very challenging process and uh, yeah. I'm, I'm the opposite to Gladiola. I haven't seen my, my, my two young boys in nearly eight months now. So uh, moving oh. countries is, uh, is, is not an ideal thing, but you know, we've, uh, we've been through an incredible time uh, around the world and, you know, we've, I think everybody's learned a lot. Uh, yeah. I think we've, we've unpacked new ways to engage with customers and, Customers have found new ways to engage with us. So all in all, the, the reset button has been hit. And you know, who, who knows what the future holds at this point? Yeah, but now everyone, all of us should be happy that we are all in good health. That's the first thing, primary, that we are all doing well. We are all here together digitally. At least we get to see each other. I know there is a lot of digital fatigue also going around, but then this is our best way of seeing each other, being happy. And Balaji, what's been happening with you? How has the year been for you? The year wasn't treating me well, but uh, the good thing happened was I got married during this pandemic. Oh, wow. So, <laughs> that's been a roller coaster ride for me, if you ask me, because I was, it was a last minute thing where things rushed up. There has been constraint last minute where the number of guests gets restricted. So getting married was a tough thing <laughs> during this pandemic, if you ask me. That's true. I, I got it done. Even wedding during pandemic is the best. You save a lot of money. I know that. <laughs> I haven't. If you ask me, I spent a lot of my earning in it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Congratulations on Thank that. You. Thank you so much. And Thank also, you. I've been focusing on well-being, physically fit, so other activities and hobbies. Are yeah. that I'm focusing on during yes, this pandemic. We have been all we have been all doing that. That's great. Right. Thank you so much, everyone, Thank for you. joining us. Now I would like Balaji to take over uh, from right. here, and uh, I will see you guys at the end of the panel. Thank you so much, everyone. Correct. Just give me one minute, please. I'll start sharing my screen. So uh, let me introduce myself. So I am Balaji. I take care of health for the South Africa region, representing Prashwats, and also the moderator for today's session. And for participants who aren't familiar about Prashwats, Prashwats is a Google founder company, and uh, it's been 10 years now. We have developed 12 different product verticals, which is empowering more than 50,000 plus paying customers across the globe. And it has been contributing more than $300 million annually. We have 13 different office locations and 3,500 employees, along with 350 plus partners who are enabling our customers to create businesses for life. So here are a few brands which we are currently closely working with, MultiChoice, New Dev, Home Choice, Air Arabia, Sterling Bank. So these are a few companies to name we are currently working with, but the list is much more. This is just a glimpse of it. Let me now move into our agenda quickly. Um, today's agenda, we have split into three parts. So Freshwork has done its own research, so which will be presented by me. So the agenda, uh, agenda for today, we have done our own research before we present it to you. So I'll be taking over it. And secondly, we will have our polls open for our participants to share their uh, views. And finally, our panelists will be sharing the thoughts based on their experiences. So with, let's not wait anymore and let's get started. So the first uh, topic we'll be discussing will be why customer service should be at the center of your growth strategy. 
And second, we'll be moving on why speed is considered as the number one factor, which is impacting your customer satisfaction. And finally, the five steps to deliver a speedy customer experience. Since the pandemic, uh, we have seen a major shift of your customer behavior, wherein they are moved from physical to online uh, platform. So since the shift has begun, customers are still expecting the same level of attention and personalization. So they want a personal touch even online. So uh, Freshworks had commissioned Forrester and we, did, and we did a study. We found that 66% of the customers say that valuing their time is paramount and 70% of the customer will leave after a single bad experience. So valuing your customer time is really essential or they tend to leave. So it is really important that we always value our customer's time and customer are also expecting an accurate, relevant and complete answer at the first go when they reach out to support. So the next uh, thing I would like to talk about is speed. Uh, Fresh, Freshworks has its own uh, data of more than 107 million support interaction. And we did our own analysis and found that speed is the only factor that has been driving the customer satisfactory score. So if you're able to provide the customer service with more speed, it results in happy customers. Happy customers tend to give more revenue for the organization. So when the customer service or the customer uh, experience agent are providing their support with a greater speed, they tend to provide a happy customer experience. So let's focus more on speed. So when I talk about happy customer focusing about speed, you might ask me, how do I deliver speed when it comes to customer service? So let me now take you the five different steps or five ways you can provide a speedy customer experience to your customers. First, when you look at, it is really important to make your device accessible. When I say making your device accessible, things have become distant. So there's been modern ways of messaging. Let's take WhatsApp or your Facebook messengers or your Apple business chat. Customers journey to look out for service starts from the minute they think about uh, reaching out to support. So you should ensure uh, based on your customer's behavior, you are present wherever they are. Let it be on the WhatsApp or over an email. So wherever your customers are, you need to ensure you have the right channels to address your customers. So make sure your services on, are available wherever your customers are. So you might ask me, uh, I would be interested in making my service accessible, but how do I do it? First, you need to focus on the digital channels. Digital channels will be the social media like Facebook and Twitter and modern messaging, WhatsApp or live chat or business chat, Apple business chat. So other mediums of modern messaging. And the second important thing you should also focus on is to make your support resource available everywhere. So either it is on the website or it is on mobile app, you should ensure that your support is reachable within just two clicks. So when the customer is trying to reach your support, ensure that you're just two clicks away from your customer to reach your support team. And then this omni-channel routing. So when we talk about omni-channel routing, it helps you to reduce the wait time of your customer. Let's take uh, when there's a phone call landing and it's been a tremendous time where more number of customers are reaching out through phone. So when you have this omni-channel routing, your AI plays into picture and there's a load balance happening. So there's no much of time your customers have to wait and your agents are able to deliver a speedy customer service. When we talk about channel shifts with context, uh, today I might be interested in reaching out to support over a phone, wherein I have time to explain what is my scenario is all about. And uh, maybe tomorrow in continuation to the same topic, I re, uh, continue the same discussion over WhatsApp or over an email. So though I transfer or use different modes of communication, there should be a single channel, single context wherein there is also a shift in the medium, the customer service or the agent should have an holistic view of whatever the channel is, they have 360 degree view of the customer. And finally, the skill-based routing. So when we talk about skill-based routing, uh, as an agent, uh, they, I might be really good at uh, solving a refund issue, or I might be good at uh, uh, discussing on the payment related queries. So whenever there is a new inquiry which is coming in, or whenever there's a customer who is reaching out for support, based on the skill of the agent, the calls or uh, tickets should get routed. So this can help to deliver a speedy customer service. And 
ensure that your services are accessible anywhere for your customer. So this is the research what Freshworks has done. So uh, Deepak, uh, I would request you to bring up the poll. Great. So here we have the poll onto our screen. And just give me one minute. So participants, I would request you to take up the poll. So since pandemic, what are the channels have you seen an increase in volume? So is it uh, your customers are reaching you through chat and messaging, or is it over phone, or do you find they write back to you on an email, or they take it to social media like Facebook, or is it the self-service portal? So what is your thoughts on this? So maybe we'll give one minute for the participants to share their thoughts. I guess even the host and panelists can also vote. So I would request the panelists to also give their suggestions here. Yeah. Oh, cannot vote, I'm sorry about that. Okay, Eddie, but thanks a lot for sharing the results. Yes, just give me a minute. Let me share my screen so it is visible to everyone. So uh, based on the survey which we got from our participants, everyone feels that chat and messaging is being the mo modem where their customers are reaching them. And even based on our research, uh, we also find that modern messaging is a platform where uh, we tend to see most of our customers reaching out. So that's a good thing to know. So let's move on to panelists. So maybe let's take up with uh, Gladiola. So Gladiola, out of your own experience, so what do you think, what channels of support are your customers using since the pandemic? So after the time we have moved to work from home and other scenario, what are the channels are your customers using? I think a uh, very interesting based on uh, the poll results, um, our current experience. Um, so what we have found is there has definitely been an increase from a chat perspective in terms of the customers that choose to use that channel for, for us to service them. But we haven't seen a subsequent decrease in the same services from a call center perspective. So even during pandemic and currently, we have seen our, our call center volume still increase steadily just as much as our, our, our chat um, interactions have increased where the expectations was once you offer for example your ability to get a statement off of a chatbot uh, and you've got that in a call script where a consultant says just remember next time you can get this through our chatbot or through our self-service options that the volumes would then decrease so we have seen that we have maintained um if not and it's in some periods actually increased the interactions from a human perspective as well as an increase in, in the self-service and, and chatbot channels. Okay, so I would take that uh, you are enforcing uh, your customers to use more of self-service, right? Do yes, we've right? got a digital, we've got a digital migration strategy, but okay. I think I need to correct, definitely not enforce. Yes. Um, we mm -hmm. believe, and especially I'm an advocate for it for, from a customer experience perspective is customer needs choice. If a customer can use your chatbot or your app, but wants to call you, the call center needs to be available. Once you walk into yes. your branch, pandemic, if it allows, it needs to be available. Yes, that's well said. That's the right of any customer. They are feel free to use any source to reach you out. So uh, Chantal, maybe we can, we look forward for your thoughts because you've worked with so many brands uh, in the region. So you have a vast experience. So we would like to hear from you. Yeah, so what we've seen with a lot of our with a lot of our clients, um, they've reported a lot more interaction on social media. Okay. Um, you know, so I think people are spending more time on Facebook. Um, they are spending more time on social media because they're obviously looking at, you know, pandemic numbers and getting home remedies for, for COVID. So they spend a lot more time on those platforms. And it seems like, especially in financial services, complaints have increased 
um, okay. and especially the complaints on social media. So I, you know, one of my theories and, and what we what we're exploring more is what's happened with us, I think, as a human race is fear has increased a lot, you know, so all of a sudden, we are very challenged, we, you know, previously, we might have been afraid of losing our jobs. Now we are extra afraid mm -hmm. because we've got we've got these health we've got these health challenges, you know, now it's not just about losing my job or looking like an idiot. Now it's actually about about dying. So I think with the fear increasing, both customers and service professionals are quicker to react and they quicker to react in probably a little bit more hostile ways. And I think people in the world need kindness the most now. So what we're seeing, the tone on those platforms are, you know, quite, quite difficult to deal with. And I think your sentiments around time, time has become an even scarcer community com com commodity now because we know we've got so little. And the thing about time and, and speed is, you know, you're not just using someone's time, you're using a, a piece of their life and they actually don't know how much time they've got. So it is our scarcest resource and it's really important that we use that time wisely. Well said, Chantal, I second your thought. So that's, you have related to the real time scenario. That's well said. Thank you so much. Uh, Sean, over to you. So would you like to bring your thoughts based on your experience? Like what channels are your, uh, are they using yeah, since look, the pandemic? I think the uh, I think the reality that we sit in specifically in 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 the in the banking sector and in right. in in most service industries actually uh, is that the 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 customer is now choosing the channel that they want to engage through. So we've got to be more and more aware of the different options out there from a channel perspective. Uh, you know, years back it was easy. You could either phone us or you could come visit the branch. Now, you know, the, with the proliferation of, 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 of channels like WhatsApp uh, for to being able to, to run WhatsApp banking processes, you know, we, we, we've got a very basic WhatsApp banking platform uh, all the way through to, to social media. And I saw a, uh, a question come up on, on the poll there around the difference between social media and and, and, and messaging and that, and it, it, it's a really great question in, in, in a few instances. The first one is that there is a difference, uh, you know, social media being LinkedIn or Facebook and, and, and chat being messaging or, uh, or bot uh, is, is, is the simple answer. But I suppose the, the, the long-term answer of that is over time, will there be a difference? And will we see an integration of services into social media and vice versa, uh, in, in, in being able to proliferate ourselves uh, into the most convenient space for our customers. And that's where you see a lot of work being driven into, in, in, into the artificial intelligence spaces uh, and, and, and how we're trying to, to pre-route customers and, and, and pre-answer questions based on you know, previous search histories and, and, and those type of things. So, you know, in, long way around uh lots of channels uh but at the moment it's about what the customer wants as opposed to uh where we want to push them i get that shana so if you ask me your thoughts are something which i'm going to cover in the next few slides because we are also going to answer the omni-channel experience of using different uh, mediums of communicating reaching the support and using the bots so that's something which is more to come in the next coming slides just give me one minute let me share you my screen Sorry about that. Okay, so Sean, uh, we just discussed about using automation. So the second most important thing we would like to uh, inform you based on our research is many organizations uh, try to mirror a human process uh, using automation. Mirroring a human process using automation leads only to dissatisfied customer experience. As a customer, when I try to reach out to a support team and the bots come into picture, and it takes like 20 to 25% more longer time before I reach to the customer support person. So this creates more frustration as an end user. So it is good to have bots, but it cannot replace the human behavior. A bot can be made smarter with all information until there's a complex issue which can, only, uh, which can be only uh, handled by a human. 
so we should understand the leverage of bots until where it can be used so this is a research we did and we really find that automation is important but not for complex queries complex queries it is a human who needs to handle it so they provide a better service and a speedy resolution and second thing we would also like to inform that uh, now we all have moved uh, online and we see we do, we search for everything so as an end user 76% of the customer try to find their own answers by just a google search by simple as simple as that so if i like to know how long does an amazon takes to for a refund i just go google it and see how long does it take is it 5 to 7 business days to the same account so it is really important as an organization everyone needs to focus on developing their self service portal so by developing the self service portal an end user tries comes to self service portal and tries to figure out their own answer before they reach out to support so any channel you use either it is whatsapp or your website chat or your facebook messenger wherever you are kindly ensure we need to have the similar kind of information across all channels so the end user is able to figure out what they are looking for and we are also uh, empowering our users to use bots and ai wherein they can work round the clock and support whenever is required to deflect the first level of the uh, first level of uh, questions which comes from the end user or the customer so i have the next poll for our uh, a participant so what is your thoughts about bots so do bots form a part of your current customer successful uh, customer service journey so uh, deepak can you please bring in the poll onto the screen so that uh, we'll get to know how are bot bots playing the current uh, scenario great so we'll have one minute uh, for our participants to answer i would appreciate everyone share your thoughts so that we are able to relate it but can we have the answers uh, i mean the first please okay so it's an interesting answer that bots are not a part of their customer current journey great so maybe now i would like to share uh, from a panelist share more on the bots so in the time to come maybe in the future not right away in the future how will your organization leverage bots to what extent and how will automation be there in the customer support journey so what's your thought on that maybe i will start with chantal uh, chantal maybe can you please throw some thoughts from your end Yeah, I, I I'm going to talk just in in general. If I look at our clients, if I look at the marketplace, and a lot of the audit work we do around experience, there's more and more people are using bots, so it is becoming quite popular. I think what a lot of organisations still don't do is really prepare for uh, implementing a bot, and right. bots are implemented really out of the box. um it is very robotic and i think what people miss is the alignment between the essence of your brand and designing that essence into your bot let's say you're a cold robotic brand okay and that's perfectly fine because that's what you advertise to be then you know install your bot out of the box and and you know just let it do its thing but if you say you're the um most friendliest kindest um warmest banking brand then design your bot so that it's aligned with all of your other interactions and i think that's where we're missing the point is you know people chat to a bot they know it's a bot but still the bots are quite rude out of the box and then they get pissed off and then they try and find the button where's the person where's the person and they can't find the person and then god forbid they look for the phone number on the website and then they get to the ivr and that's another bot you know so <laughs> Yeah if we look at consumers consumers are telling us that brands have lost the plot they've become cold they be, they've become distant the optimization drives and driving you know customers into cheaper channels customers can feel that they're not stupid and i think the brands who win will be the brands who will design the bots the ivrs the automated services the apps to be true to their brand and to deliver the essence of the brand in every moment 
that's well said that's perfectly nailed you were on dot to the point where in most brands look at cost efficient uh, tools and they make a um, maybe their customer journey is not that great so it is really important to have the right bots in place and uh, it helps to deliver a wow customer experience that's well said uh, shan can we have your thoughts on this please yeah of course uh, and 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 i think the the last point was 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 100% spot on and in that many organizations just try to thrust a bot in because it's uh, it, it's what everybody else is doing without thinking about first of all the humanization of of the process and you can see that where where, where people try and use a bot for speed uh, and i think speed in isolation is is something that uh, that needs to be to be looked at and you know, I, I prefer to use the word velocity because speed, uh, velocity is speed and direction. You know, it's very easy to give an answer out of a bot, but if you keep giving the wrong answer, uh, you're, you're just prolonging a, a really bad experience. And we've gone down the road uh, in, in, in terms of developing a, a humanoid banking environment, uh, which not only has a physical presence in the form of a robot, but has a virtual presence uh, in integrating across our across our platforms and our channels to ensure consistency, and then a single point of development. So when you push enter, it's a it's a multi-channel experience that is uh, that is then updated. But you know, I think what more than anything else, just having a bot in isolation of a strategy and a and a decent customer journey. Uh, you you really need to 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 think twice before you just bot yourself out there because it can destroy a customer's experience uh, if it's not done properly. That's true because having or uh, implementing the bots the right way will make a success to it. Right, I get that. So Gladiola, can we have your ideas on this piece based on your real time experience? Um, for us, I think um, in reality is, um, I think your question was in the times to come, is the time is now. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, so so we had had to fast track our road. Um, what our bot name is, Garago, it's at, uh, in South African, Tutu means answer to respond. Um, but what we've um, adopted, and, and I think it links to what Chantal was, was, was referring to, to ensure proper alignment with your brand, et cetera, is we have a hybrid model. So at any point where you feel that Garabo is struggling to solve for your query, you are able to branch out to consultant who, if we are not in peak times, can then literally give you a call. You have a callback option or you would then advise when is the better time for us to call you back. And I think that's going to be our reality for quite some time because it is AI, these things are learning. Got it. Uh, yeah, and, and what we have prioritized are, and I think you mentioned it in, in one of your slides, which is critical, are the least complex customer queries, but yet high volume. For example, getting a, a statement, etc. But when complexity comes in, I think I mean, to be transparent with everybody is we are not there yet. We're using a hybrid model where um, if you are engaging with, with, with Garabo and she is struggling, or you might choose to think of her as a him or he is struggling, you are able to branch out and, and, and engage with a, with a consultant. So you are referring to that we need to be proactive than being reactive. That's what you are referring to, correct? Correct. Perfect. So that's what I'm going to talk about next. So the third most important thing or the important factor to deliver a speedy customer experience is to have a shift from being reactive to proactive. So being proactive doesn't mean that uh, you need to have your bots coming up on the website and asking, hey, can I help you? That's not uh, the real time being proactive. You need to learn your customer's journey. You need to understand where your customers are and give them a personalized help. For example, when your customer is unable to make a payment online, that's when you you have your bots coming in and say, hey, I see that you are finding difficulties in making an online payment, can I help you? So that should be the proactiveness or that's when a customer would really need you rather than when a customer comes into your website and your bots come in, hey, how are you do to, uh, doing today? Can I help you? So when customer tend to see these kinds of uh, pop-ups coming in, they tend to lose interest. So it's always good to have 
a proactive messaging only when it is required, not everywhere on your website. So this proactive messaging should also be personalized based on their behavior. So as an organization, we should study our customers' behavior online. We should study like which page do they send, uh, spend more? What is the number of repeated questions they tend to reach out to customers? So what is that we need to improve in our website or throughout our products? So we should be proactive in the sense, learning more about our customer and provide relevant information to them. So let's take a real time example. We all of us use Uber. So when we try to book a cab in Uber, we know where the nearest cab is. So that is the information as an end user, we look at it. So our products should also come up front showing the information what our customers are expecting. So that is what I, we would like to highlight that the third important factor which will deliver speedy customer service is rather than being reactive, it's always good to be proactive and provide the relevant information that your customers are looking for. And the fourth major factor, which I would like to really stress upon is a customer is made to wait only when an agent doesn't have sufficient information before them. And, uh, and, but generally as an agent, they are, they need to look at different tools. For example, when there's a query for refund, they need to look at the financial tools. They need to know the customer records. They need to know what product they have purchased, when did they purchase, is it in the period of validity, is a refund applicable? So they need to know the customer's history. They need to log into a different system to understand will the refund be eligible and then they get back to them with an answer. So a customer is made to wait during this journey where an agent is trying to find an information. So you, you need to empower your agents by providing a 360 degree view of your customer. So whenever a customer is landing onto your customer support, an agent should have all the relevant information like when was the last time they reached you? What was the query they reached? What was the modem they reached? And what did they speak about? And today, what are they relating to? So you also have on your right side pan or you have all, all information relating to the customer in one single place so that your custom or your agents are able to deliver a speedy customer experience. And generally agents are, there are also scenarios wherein they fill up information. There are certain forms they need to type manually. So that's when you, you should also use your bots capability where the bots do all the manual work which is required whenever there's a call landing up for them to support. So your agents should always be empowered with the right tools and at the right place. So they have all the information in hand so they can provide a speedy customer service and delight your customers. You can ask me, is it the only way to provide speedy customer service is providing a 360, 360 degree view of a customer? Along with this, there are also certain other factors wherein it can help you to provide a speedy customer service. First, you need to develop your own internal knowledge base. So each and every day you will come across different scenarios. So you should build your internal knowledge base based on the scenarios your customers are reaching. So anyone who is looking out for certain information, they refer to the internal knowledge base and they are able to provide a quicker solution to your customer. And second is by doing mock drills. Mock drills, I mean like uh, you have your senior folks in the organization. So you train your senior folks with the junior people who have joined and doing certain mock drills can really make your agents to deliver faster. And 360 degree view is what I said, you need to give the right tools for your agents for them to deliver a quicker solution and automate the routine tasks. They might be routine tasks, as I told you, they might need to fill up form or raise a ticket or internal things which needs to be coordinated for them to solve an issue. So these things should be automated with the power of artificial intelligence or the bots. So we spoke about bots, so I would like to quickly share you what Freshdesk bots can do for you. Just give me one minute. Here's a quick video, I am just sharing it to you. Hope you are able to see my screen, right? Are you able to hear the audio? Uh, Balaji, we can't see your screen or hear you. Okay, just give me one minute. I'm just playing a quick video, how bots can be helpful in the real time scenario. Can you see my screen now? Ah, uh, yes. Great. Meet Erica. She manages a support team that's 100 agents strong. At Hope you are able to hear the audio, right? Yes, Balaji, please go ahead. Great. At the scale at which her company is growing, the issue volume is increasing rapidly. 
Ensuring her team is motivated and productive to solve customer issues at scale on multiple channels is a problem she's hoping to tackle. Now, that's no easy task. She notices that a lot of issues her agents handle are repetitive, with multiple back and forth interactions. They seem to spend a lot of time crafting responses and juggling multiple tools to resolve them. Issues are piling up. Her customers are dissatisfied with delayed responses, and her agents are frustrated. How can Erica turn the situation around, you ask? Meet Freddy, the best-in-class AI platform from Freshworks. Erica deploys customer-facing bots with the help of Freddy on all channels that her customers love, be it email, chat, phone, WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, the list is endless. Bots are now the first line of defense for her team, and all the transactional questions are automatically taken care of. The bots detect intent, engage in conversation, and provide resolutions. With instant resolution, customers are delighted, and agents are also relieved of these mundane questions. But that's just half the bridge crossed. Erica still has to help her agents be more productive. Well, Freddie's got her back here, too. With Freddy's agent-facing AI capabilities, Erica is able to set up bots to onboard, train, and assist her agents in solving complex issues faster. That's not all. Freddy takes care of classifying all incoming tickets, suggests relevant knowledge-based articles and canned responses, and even helps agents automate processes on external systems with just a click. Erica's team is no longer dependent on multiple tools to deliver exceptional customer service. Now, all she has to do is monitor the performance of her team and Freddie. With faster responses and resolutions, her CSAT scores are better than ever. Her agents are starting to have their valuable time back and are getting productive by the day. It's a win-win. How easy was that? Take the AI-first approach to customer support with Freddie. I'm sure the, the bot was doing the best it could. So next uh, we have, just give me one minute, let me share my screen. We have a poll for the audience. So uh, can you bring the poll to the screen? So, so the next poll will be like audience. Uh, so what has helped your agent to transmit to work to remotely work smoothly. So is it having an intuitive cloud-based help desk system or is it automating an agent assist or the drills or training has made them efficient or is it agent self-service resources? So what do you think from your opinion? Thanks, Deepak. Can I have the results, please? Great. Uh, using just, I'm unable to see it. Yeah. Using drills and training has been the most efficient way. That's perfectly right. Even I second that. But also, along with that, we see that agent self service resources also help them. So we have two options that are closely competing with each other. Great. Now let's get to know our panel's view. So, uh, Let's take up with Sean. Sean, uh, what steps have you taken to empower your or delight your customers? To empower your agents and they delight your customers. So maybe your thoughts on this, please. So look, I think the the the, the first piece is you got, you need to make sure that the that, that that your teams have got the right tools to be able to 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 service the customers, especially in the working from home environment. And and, and I think that's where very much where where the world is going. So. The, the the right tool space and the right the right staging grounds uh, for for customer service agents specifically to 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 access multiple systems uh, in one place as opposed to opening and closing and logging in and logging out is a is a critical environment and I think uh, Mercedes Benz is probably leading the way here in the zero layer 
uh, that they're creating across their business, uh, which is fundamental to getting things done quickly. Uh, and I, I, I must agree with, uh, with, with the response from, from participants that, you know, training and, 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 and that is, is, is probably the most critical part of any type of service recovery environment. And when somebody asks you a question, you have the, the, the knowledge at hand and there's a myriad of tools in terms of, you know, script prediction and, and, and that, that can be worked into any type of uh, analytical environment to, to help agents. And, but at the end of the day, knowing, knowing your products and processes, is, 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 there's, there's no substitute for it. So that's, that's a lot of what, uh, what we've done. And I think the, the, the next big thing is if you have the availability to do it, take the decision closer to the customer, let the customer service themselves uh, and only in absolute need uh, get in touch with, with, with somebody in the, in the organization. That is your best solution when it comes to where the world is going. So uh, you are referring that the self-service should be achieved for them to answer their queries, right? Hope yeah, 100%. 100%. Right. You know, if you look at, 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 at how we're rolling things out across, uh, across Mauritius, it's about taking decisions closer to the customer. So rather than burying it deep inside some sort of architecture, make it a one or two step process and allow the customer to do it themselves. You know, apply for a loan by yourself, get an answer by yourself. Don't, you don't have to, to sit through the, uh, the, the back office drudgery that uh, we often get caught up in. But you are absolutely right. When there is a self-learning, we get to learn, uh, learn a lot. So we are not dependent on any system for us to get our knowledge done. Great, that's sure. a great thought to have. Uh, Chantal, can we have your views on this please? Yeah, so Balaji, I'm, you know, I'm, uh, uh, being a being a training provider, you know, I think we've never been busier. I I said earlier we've got 800 people on our on our on our on our learning academy. I think a lot of so what we what we're seeing, you know, we've taken hundreds of people through our Brand Warrior program in the last year, where people, you know, that they, they want to bring good things to to the work environment but all of a sudden they distribute it. So they're uncertain. They might've had a little bit of a drop in, in, their, in their confidence. And, you know, just connecting the dots and giving people super skills have really helped the environment in which we, which we work in. Some of the service professionals say to us, they haven't had training in years, you know? So all of a sudden companies are sitting, are, are paying attention to, to people's training needs. Um, and one of, the, one of the courses we run, <laughs> it's, it's, we call it the Angry Customers Bootcamp. It's like turning angry customers into raving fans. I mean, that, that course is constantly fully booked because people are seeing more exaggerated emotions and it's so easy to teach someone how to deal with that if you give people the super skills of listening and empathy you can totally transform their work environment so we've trained people with two babies on their lap with some puppies and dogs and um, parrots on their shoulders and I think people once they're equipped with those super skills some people have said to us they love working from home because you know they can do it in the safety of their own home they've got their kids playing at their feet they've got a nice rhythm going so I think organizations are really going to struggle now when they move people back into the work environment and mandate that they go back into the work environment because we're just going to see an, a, a fresh storming and norming of teams it's going to be like a reconstructed a new environment. So I'm excited by how much our clients are investing in their people and really giving them the super skills. And I wish more people would just empower service agents to be their best. Definitely. Empowering the agents has been the crux because they only, they, are, they meet their customers and delight them with their service. So it's always important the customers, I mean, the agents are empowered with the tools they need. And Gladiola, can we have your thoughts on this, please? Um, I think I, I, my, my sentiments, I concur with um, Sean and Chantel. Um, I think fortunately for us, when the pandemic hit, we had just launched our service standards training material. And our focus there is very much on, it's, it's behavioral tools to help you engage with customers. 
with a core focus on your ability to demonstrate empathy and active listening. Um, and I think what has been a big win for us is in conjunction with that is we also have our quality monitoring system, which then listens to our calls and conversations and give us insight into whether or not our agents are complying with demonstrating those servant standards. The beauty of it, I think, and we love technology for that, is we get near real time reports, which then show us where we have the gaps. And uh, Obviously, as we've been talking, the only way to close that is through training. And um, because of the way things are now, we have been adopted virtual coaching sessions. So, I mean, I right. agreed with the other panelists. It has been, and interestingly enough, um, agreed with, with, with the audience as well, that it has been training. Great. So you train your employees using the technology in place, right? Correct. Great. Perfect. So uh, let's move on to the last important factor which we need to consider to deliver a speedy customer experience is to refresh your customer service metrics. So generally or traditionally, people measure the customer satisfaction team-wise or an agent-wise, but we need to shift our focus. Rather than measuring the customer satisfaction level from a team perspective, it's always good to look at from an organization standpoint. So we need to look at like how many of your customers are being serviced even before reaching out to a support team. So let's look at a metric like no contactless support system. So we need to look at something different and provide a better service to your customer that is speedy and relevant to them and also brings them delight among the end users. So with this in mind, I have given you the five steps how we can deliver a speedy customer service and delight your customers. With that uh, coming to the end of the presentation, I would like to quickly take a poll here uh, the participants, would you like to have a personalized demo of Fresh Dash, which is a future ready customer service platform? I would request you to put in your answers. Even if it's a no, you would be happy to take it up, but still, your votes are really valuable to us. So we request you to give a thought and share your opinion here. Great. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, now that we've seen, uh, I mean, through this session, we've seen how critical bots and uh, AI play, uh, uh, what role they play uh, in, in creating a great customer experience. So we would encourage you to, uh, uh, all of you to sort of take this poll and, and let us know what you think. And even if it's a no, even if it's a maybe later, it's still fine. But uh, we would uh, love for you, love to hear what you think um, uh, of this presentation and this walkthrough. And we would be happy to schedule a, uh, a personalized and more customized demo for you if in case you need one. Thank you. Thanks, Deepak. Thanks for it. All right, so we're stopping the poll right now. Thank you so much, everyone, for the re responses. Great. So uh, let's move on to the chat section. So uh, Deepak, can you share the screen? So can we move on to the chat? and see if there are any questions to be answered by our panelists. Yes, but so, uh, I think we have the Q&A coming up next uh, for the right. audience. So audience, as, as I had mentioned earlier, if you could uh, you know, post your questions, what you have, it would be great. Uh, we have Pooja ready with our questions that, that we've already have uh, uh, asked in, in the chat and the Q&A tabs. So Pooja, over to you. Yes. So we have one question which was relating when we were talking about bots was in the South African context and the other countries, isn't there an opportunity to keep slightly larger customer service teams to retain humanity and authenticity? So maybe Chantel can take this up. Yeah, I think I think we've spent a lot of time in co-design sessions with consumers in the in the last year. And, and what people are saying is, you know, use my time and add value to my life. You know, so, so yes, I get it. If I want something simple done, do it fast, but add time to my, you know, make my time valuable, make my time meaningful. And, you know, if I'm engaging with my bank and let's say I ask them, why didn't, why didn't you approve my credit? You know, smarten me up so that next time I apply for credit, I know how, 
I know what I need to do and I know what I would need to to qualify for for credit. Um, so I think, you know, people in general are saying brands have become really, really cold. Brands have become automated. Brands have become cold. And if we look at a typical service agents, um, you know, key performance metrics, it, a lot of people still measure average handling time. A lot of people measure and then, you know, when customers say you called, you go, but this is what you measure. You measure them to get to get customers off the phone as, as quickly as possible. I think people are yearning for human experiences, whether that is a bot, make sure that your bot is well designed and well written, whether that's social media. You know, consumers lose their shit completely over, you know, hello, Peter and social media responses that say, say, please inbox me or, you know, let's take this offline or I've sent you a message. Uh, you know, they want to they want to they want to be engaged in a, in a warm, uh, human, compassionate manner. So I, I would say there's no recipe. You know, I'm, I'm not saying make your make your call center bigger or you know don't automate your services. I'm saying listen to your customers because if you don't listen to them, they're gonna go to the next brand that listens to them. And I think the marketplace have become very fragile. I've been predicting for years that brands, big brands, will just drop out of the marketplace. We didn't see this pandemic coming. And this pandemic have shifted consumer expectations. Consumers expect meaningful experiences. Uh, and, you know, agents are now questioning, you know, the brand that I work for, is the culture really right for me? You know, I'm sitting here peaceful in my home. Why do I have to put up with so much shit in the office? So people are reassessing their lives. So I would say to brands, be careful. You might lose some of your really good people and you might lose your customers fast if you don't think about what they need and if you don't listen to them. Thanks, Chantel. I hope uh, Suresh, who asked the question, it answers your uh, question. On, we, we have another question, which is again regarding the bot, which says that not everyone needs the use of a bot. What are your operating models? What are your pain points? Do you need 24 bus 7 support? So do we need to scale parts of the services, et cetera? So maybe Gladiola or Sean can take up this uh, question. Uh, comfortable on, on, on my end to take it. Um, I think in agreement, not, not everyone needs to use a bot. And I think I explained earlier in our current operating model, what we have done is we have focused on customer queries with the least complexity in terms of prioritizing what we teach our bot to solve for. Um, from a 24 seven support perspective is um, I think during pandemic actually because of constraints and, and, and finances, we had um, a call center that was operating 24 seven that had to be cut down. Um, but very shortly after that, we had to be forced to reinforce it because the need was there. Um, and, and I think also to emphasize what I mentioned when I was chatting about this earlier is we are not there yet. We are operating on a hybrid model, which allows for a customer to branch out and speak to consultants. Because our reality is we are seeing that even people that start at the bot as the initial channel of interaction, um, even if you solve that particular query that I came in for, I might want to branch out to a consultant and chat about perhaps a more complex um, a query. Okay, thanks, thanks, Gladiola. I hope uh, Robin, who asked the question, this answers it. Uh, we have one more question, Sean. Maybe you can take this up. It is talking about employee satisfaction. So it says, does employee satisfaction has an influence on customer service? And if so, would it not be better for employees to work from home if they are happy there than at office? What do you think about this? It's a good question. Yeah, it's a great question, Bahanu. There, and I think there's there, there, there's so many answers here. Uh, I, I think, firstly, yes, uh, employee satisfaction is a is is a massively important part of 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 the customer experience. And you know, I think uh, I think we've all had that instance when you walk into a shop and the person <laughs> on the other side of that shop is uh, having a bad day or, or just not interested, and it completely ruins it for you. So. I think absolutely is 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 the answer, uh, and 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 to show it, I mean, we've got a we've got a real time 
um, customer experience measurement program uh, that's got 15 different metrics that are that are measured um, at the point of engagement. Uh, four of them are linked to the to the employee, uh, and, and and that'll give us a good indicator of you know how well we are able to to service the customer at that specific time. But the second point is, is, is one that I think a lot of organizations around the world are grappling with in terms of working from home. Uh, and yes, uh, working from home is a requirement. Yes, if uh, your staff are happy working from home, let them work at home, give them the choice. Uh, but it's, it, it, it comes with a couple of caveats. There are some roles in the organization that cannot be done from home. So I think that's that's the first piece. There's no doubt that uh, in, in, in many instances, creativity and, and, and innovation is slightly stifled when you're working remotely and sitting on teams and, and, and everybody experiences that, that, that screen time fatigue. And lastly, working from home in many instances isn't a right. It's a, it's, it's a responsibility that an employee needs to take on uh, and manage effectively. If you are uh, an employee who is say, not delivering and, and, and not uh, aligning with the, with the culture around uh, the output of working from home, then there is that instance where you can, where you can lose that right, ir irrespective of how happy you are at home. You still have a job to do. You still have to deliver. You still have to service customers. You still have to meet your targets. Uh, so there is that responsibility element that's aligned to it as well. Yes, that's absolutely right. I completely agree, Sean, because we have been all working from home. We have been experiencing a lot of digital fatigue, like what you said. And it depends on everyone. It's from person to person. How much are they agreeing to work from home or someone even wants to go back to office as well? Or maybe balance between work from office and work from home. To both sure. of them. Um, Chantel, uh, regarding your question, we have another question from Suresh himself. He's really... Happy with the answer, but then he would want to know, doesn't this present a danger of customers having to go through the hoops to show that the query is complex? So this may make their experience frustrating regarding the bots that he had asked you the question. Sure, I'm not sure what that, what that, what that question relates to the previous one about- Yeah, so he's know, asking, implement... yeah, so he's asking just in terms of having bots dealing with low complexity queries, doesn't this present the danger of customers having to go through hoops to show that the query is complex? No, so so I mean, I mean, the bots need to be designed very specifically, you know, to give customers a benefit over talking to a human being. So I, I think again, it, it's all about the design. What are you trying to do? Who are you trying to, who are you trying to please? What are you, what, what's what's the ultimate goals? And um, so, so that that being said, I want to quickly go back to something Sean said because I think, I think we, you know, now that we've got a lot more metrics to see how long people are online, you know, we're watching them closely because we come very much from this command and control, very hierarchical uh, leadership style. We have looked at stats across the world, and people are very productive from home. And if they're not productive from home, that's not to say that they that they were productive when they were in the office. You just you, you just didn't see it. They could have still been playing Candy Crush in the toilet on their mobile phone and not meeting their their KPI. So I, I think we we must be careful about you know now that people are at home. You know maybe they're not as productive as what they what they used to be because I think people can hide less now that they're at home. The other thing I want to challenge is creativity. So. You know, Brand Love has, you know, for the last more than 10 years, we've helped companies to really create more love for their brands through our design services. So we're an innovation company. We call ourselves the IDEO of Africa. And what we found is if I had executives in a two day workshop to get them to design their essence, to design new experiences, to really connect with their customers, I can now get as much in a half day workshop 
than what I did in two days, because we get people to focus. We are very deliberate. The collaboration tools that we use is phenomenal. We have a cameras on culture. So usually if I arrive at a meeting and people don't have their cameras on, I say, I'm sorry, but I have to leave because you wouldn't sit in a meeting room with me with a paper bag over your face. So you better switch on your camera because that's how we generate energy in order to collaborate. I also think, Sean, we sit a lot. Okay, so my desk is set up so that I can stand up and I'll show you a trick before we go, Puja, I'll show them a trick, just how to energize themselves. So I think, folks, we, we get so used to like now I'm sitting at a desk and I've got to be here by eight. Um, we need to break out of the mold of this box because we're going to be working online for a long, long time. All right. A quick vaccine isn't going to solve all of the problems. These problems that we don't even know about yet. So I I have really had struggles with this online world. I've, as a leader in a, in a company, I've had to work through my control issues of not being able to see my people all day long. I've had to get smart about how I measure them. We actually went down from a three day, from a five day week to a four day week. What a phenomenal experiment. So as a leader, I've been on my knees, people. I've been challenged massively. But some of it I need to let go and I've got to re-architect my leadership style and my business to cope with this new world. Thank you so much, uh, Jindal. That makes, that actually brings us Great. to the end and, to and, the uh, session. Yes, Balaj. Yes, Pooja. So uh, the last one hour or so has been really informative for all of us. And our panelists were also kind enough to share their experiences. So. Uh, now I welcome Chantal followed by Gladiola and Sean to give their closing note. Yes, we so, would like all the speakers to give like a short concluding note yes. uh, regarding about uh, the entire summarizing the entire webinar in like two minutes each so that we have a concluding note. Maybe we can get a little creative as well. So we just want to see how you want to conclude the session. All right, how long did you give us? How many minutes? Two minutes. You know, I, you know, I can carry on forever. Okay, so I just want to say thank you. Thank you for listening to our ramblings. And I want to say thank you to Gladiola and Sean for um, for being here today. It was awesome to connect to connect with you guys. And I think, you know, my takeaway would really be around, you know, reassessing your your influence in 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 whatever your role is and really thinking about, you know, how can you get the most out of this current situation that we're in? You know, how can you design your workspace? How can you design your world? How can you design your, your leadership style? And then to really think innovatively because, uh, you know, life's short. If you're not having fun in your job, if you're not finding joy in what you do, then you've got to shift it because we've all realized how how fragile life can be. And then I want to quickly show you just a physical move. All right, folks, I'm just going to take my feathers off because I'm dying here from. So we sit a lot. All right. Which means we sit about we move. We move 80 percent less than what we did before COVID. All right. So our our natural alignment goes out. So if you feel at the end of the day, oh, my shoulders, you know, sometimes I even feel my face is sore. That's from not moving enough, not getting enough oxygen in our bodies, not getting enough blood flow. OK, so ultimately our cells function on voltage. OK, and the only way we can actually get more voltage into our bodies is by breathing properly all right and by moving so if we breathe and we move we get the blood flow going so a very very simple exercise that i want you all if you're sitting on your on your booty now just quickly get up okay because i, I want you to do this exercise with me i want you to stand with your feet just a fist apart and just turn your feet slightly in like 10 degrees all right and just feel where your balance is. Okay, so my balance, I'm, uh, if, I, if I just relax my body, okay, I'm going like way forward. Okay, so I'm totally off balance if I stand still. So I want you to fight, take your hands like this, interlace it, put it behind your head like this. Okay, and just stretch your elbows back. Yes, I know you can see my belly. I don't care. <laughs> so just stretch back, your, stretch back your elbows and you feel a stretch like in your back. You feel it down here. Okay, nice stretch. And if you stand like this, just for 30 seconds to a minute, okay, and you do it again, you do it again, and you feel where your balance is now. I'm completely balanced because what happened, my shoulder blades rolled, so I've got nice balance here. 
and my hips are nicely in balance. So I want you, there's plenty of exercises. If you want to hop onto some of our free workshops or stalk, stalk me on LinkedIn, you'll see what we do. There's a couple of exercises, but I want you to do this three times a day. Your body is going to feel so much better. Be kind to your body. That's the only thing we've got, folks. All right. And that's me. Thanks, Pooja. Thanks, Chantel. That was great. I'm going to try it myself. <laughs> that was really nice. Thank you so much. Glad you all are concluding notes from you. Um, I think concluding notes on, on, on my end is let us not forget the basics. <laughs> if um, I'm, I'm not aware if any of the participants are potential uh, vendors that um, I guess like yourselves provide solutions to AI and so forth. Um, I understand that even during the pandemic, everybody has gone off and developed the most awesome solution that you are aware we need before we even we tell you we need it. But when you engage with um, a customer, try and listen and help them solve for what they need, especially with how fast we are moving in the digital era. It's now. We thought we were planning for it to come. Yeah. So, um, and I've seen in lots of engagements with, with vendors is people are very quick to come and present all sorts of beautiful artificial intelligence solutions. Just remember, keep it simple, basics. <laughs> Try and solve for your customers' needs and then you can show them the bells and whistles. And I, I'm not standing up to do anything. <laughs> thank you, exercise. I'm gonna say thank you, Chantal, for that. <laughs> Thank you so much, Gladiola. Yes, we have to keep it basics and we have to keep it right. Thank you so much for your time. Sean, um, coming to you, uh, in the end, what are your concluding notes? Yeah, look, I mean, uh, first of all, thank you to, to, to everybody who was, who was part of the discussion today and to Chantel and Gladiola. I mean, it was great chatting with you guys. Uh, you know, realistically, I mean, Gladiola hit it the nail on the head. You know, it, we, it, it is about keeping it simple. We all have customers out there. Without those customers, there are there is no business for us. So, you know, if I can if if I can offer two words of advice, I mean, it's you know, the first one is listen to your customers. You know, they they'll tell you when something's wrong and they'll tell you what they want. Uh, it, it it doesn't have to be a guessing game. And the most important piece out of all of this is add value in their in their life. You know, that's the that's the opportunity to delight them, irrespective of whether it's with a hello or a goodbye. Uh, or something as complicated as a, uh, as a bot doing high-tech mathematics to decide whether or not I need a brown shoe or a blue shoe. You know, that's, uh, that, that's, it's all part of adding value. And if you're listening to your customers and you're adding value uh, into their lives at the right time, then you'll have no problems with the customer experience. So uh, good luck out there. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's a crazy world. And uh, Looking forward to chatting again sometime. Yes. And maybe meet in person soon. Maybe next year or something. We will... oh, wouldn't that be an amazing thing? Yes. Yes, that would be. Balaji. Um, yes, Pooja. You have anything, um, your concluding notes? Well, it was really a great session for all of us because uh, we learned how to is actually driving the customer journey and uh, what best should be done from an agent's perspective for them to provide the best service to all their customers. So uh, I also look forward to meeting you all in person, but since pandemic, we are unable to meet all of them in person, but we are hoping to uh, come over this as soon as possible. Stay yeah. happy and cheers to all of you. Cheers, cheers, Balaji. Thank you so and much. Yes, Balaji, tell me. No, no, that was a, a cool pair of glasses from uh, <laughs> just leave, uh, I just wanted to thank all the panelists on behalf of Freshworks. Thank you, Gladiola, uh, for joining us today. Thank you, Chantel, for, uh, you know, giving a glimpse into Lady Gaga's life. <laughs> 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 thanks a lot uh, for your presentation. It was really, we all had a lot of fun. Um, thanks a lot, Sean, for joining us. Uh, and thanks, Balaji, for moderating this. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Over to you for the closing note. Thanks, everyone, for joining this uh, discussion today. Hope you all had a fun and entertaining discussion uh, and uh, and at the same time informative as well uh, please reach out to us if you need anything in terms of if you want a personalized demo if you want any details regarding our product we'll be happy to help you and we'll be happy to schedule us uh, individual sessions for you with our product experts and back to you Pooja. 
Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Deepak. It was great hosting you. Thank you everyone for joining the webinar. So uh, the webinar is a part of uh, CEM Africa. Uh, it is our series. It's a webinar series, which is going to lead up to our main event, which is to be hosted virtually on the 12th of October. And this will be our eighth edition of CEM Africa. And we look forward to hosting everyone whosoever has attended this session at the event on the 12th of October. We will keep you posted about the details and stay safe and keep well. Thank you so much for your time, everyone. Thanks. Cheers. Bye. Got it. So have a lovely day. Bye. Bye. Okay.